Hey, what's going on? My name is Alex with DJ Cut Entertainment, and today I want to discuss how to build your timeline for your wedding reception coming up. I'm Alex Ramey, I'm the owner of DJ Cut Entertainment, and I wanna discuss how I approach wedding timelines with my clients and how I feel the most successful way to build out your timeline. So the first place I like to start is the very end of the reception. Uh, a lot of venues, unless you're having a backyard party, have a certain cutoff time. They have a time where the alcohol needs to be cut off, then they have a, a time where the music needs to be cut off and people need to start heading out of the venue. And then also sometimes they have a, a cutoff time where the catering company and all the vendors need to be out by. So that's one thing you need to consider when building in your timeline. So you need to think about how long do you want the dance party? So you take the time that the music needs to be cut off and you work backwards and you figure out how long of a dance party you need. I actually tell my clients about 45 minutes to about an hour and a half is a pretty good dance party for a wedding reception. So working in the spirit of going backwards from there, we have uh, special dances and the cutting of the cake. And these usually take about 10 minutes to about 25 minutes, uh, depending on what we got going on and how many different dances uh, that we're doing. From there, working backwards, we have speeches. Now speeches can be 10 minutes long or it can be in an hour and a half long. So you really just gotta think, um, how many people do you want to speak and do you wanna give them a time limit. I've had father or bride speeches. This is his moment to shine and he took this time for 45 minutes to do his speech. So know who's speaking and either set time limits or get an idea at your rehearsal who wants to speak and how long they want to speak for. Now, when it comes to dinner, this can usually be about 45 minutes to an hour and a half. It really depends on the number of guests that will be at your wedding and if you're going to do buffet style or sit down family style. Family style takes about twice as long because you have to bring out a couple different appetizers, then you have the main course, then you have dessert versus buffet. We just get everybody to get up in line and as soon as everybody has gone through the buffet line, then we can move into speeches. So then we have cocktail and grand entrance. Now the grand entrance is really quick, usually takes no more than five minutes. Now cocktail, I like to have this be my buffer time. And what I mean by this is it's a flexible time that can either be extended or moved up. And the way cocktail hour works is after the ceremony is done, the bride and groom need to go sign the marriage license, finish uh, the family pictures, and I tell them to take this time to have some alone time up in the bridal suites because this is the only alone time you'll get throughout the whole day. So I like to use this as the flexible time, but it's usually anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour on average. Um, once those events are all ready to go, then I go talk to the catering company, find out if dinner's ready. Once they're ready, then we can do the grand entrance and that's the end of cocktail hour now don't get this confused you don't need to have alcoholic beverages for a cocktail hour it's just the buffer time after the ceremony till the grand entrance it can be anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour long it just depends on what kind of ceremony you are having uh, religious ceremonies take a little bit longer um, but we usually start our background music 30 minutes before the bride walks down the aisle. Now I tell my clients, if you wanna walk at four o'clock, put on your invitations that you are gonna walk at 3.30 because it's usually about 20 to 30 minutes behind. It's not that you guys aren't ready, but guests are still you know, rolling in. They need to set down their gifts, their cards, find their way to the ceremony site. So ceremonies tend to run a little bit behind. So if you wanna start your wedding at 
you know, four o'clock, put on those invitations, 3.30. Now, our package starts when you put on the timeline what time you're planning on walking down the aisle. We'll begin the background music 30 minutes beforehand, but this gives us a timeline for your package. Now, I feel this is the best approach to try to work backwards, and so that way you're not getting to the end of your timeline and stuff is starting to get crunched together. I like to have a little bit of a buffer time because ceremonies run a little bit late. Sometimes pictures take longer uh, sunset photos need to be adjusted so there are many different things that need to be adjusted throughout the day that you know make it crunch down to that end timeline where we have to get everything done before the photographer leaves or before we need to cut off the music and I don't want my clients to feel stressed doing this process so this is our approach to doing timelines and it seemed to work really well for a lot of our clients and alleviate some of that stress Thank you guys for watching this video. My name is Alex with DJ Cut Entertainment. If you would like to set up a meeting with us, click the link below. Thank you guys.